Hello and welcome to another episode of the Big Bash Show for the 2011-2012 KFC Big Bash League season. Of course, it is now 2012 and this show we're going to be discussing all the things that are happening in the Big Bash at the moment. Get you guys, the fans, involved as well. Now let's jump straight into it with my co-host from The Age. It's cricket writer Jesse Hogan. Jesse Hogan, welcome to 2012. What's changed in the Big Bash League season at the moment? Well, this round, not, not so much. You had the, the Ho Hobart and Perth still being in great form. The Renegades getting continuing off from after their slow start and actually finding some form. And you're at the Brisbane Heat just still struggling again. So yeah, more of the same. What is it about the Brisbane Heat and the Melbourne Stars at the moment? They're just failing to find that winning formula. Oh, when I think of the Brisbane Heat, I think a lot goes back to actually the loss of Ben Cutting at the start. He's a very influential fast bowler who can actually provide some good hitting down the order as well. So I'm not overly surprised about Brisbane Heat, especially since they've also lost Vittori uh, to injury and McCullum hasn't played much. The Melbourne Stars, there's just really no explanation there. When you look at the depth through their team, they just really should have excelled, should have been in probably in the top two or three. And to be virtually out of the race of the finals, not totally, but all but, it's uh, really a terrible, terrible result for them. Mm, it's a formidable lineup with Hussey and uh, obviously George Bailey as well. Cameron White's just not doing the job at the moment. We'll get to that a little bit later in the show. Brad Hodge now making an impact for the Melbourne Renegades. They surely missed him at the start and they're back into contention. Can they make the finals? Oh, I think I think absolutely. I think they're a totally different team with Brad Hodge in there. Uh, I think he, he makes them very feared. And now being two from two, and even with a run rate that's slightly better than the Sydney Sixers, despite their awful result in round one away to Adelaide. I think they're a very big chance to make the final. Well, the next few rounds are going to be very interesting for a few teams indeed. There's a lot of teams in contention for the finals at the moment, though. It is the Hobart Hurricanes, the guys from down south doing all the hard work. They're on top of the ladder. At the moment, it's Brisbane Heat, unfortunately, still on the bottom. Now, of course, each week on the show, we ask who's hot and who's not. It's a question based on the performances of the players in the KFC Big Bash fantasy game. At the moment, there are some players absolutely on fire. Jesse Hogan, some players who are hot this week. I mean, Chris Gale has continued his form, of course. Yeah. He's doing amazing. Oh, Shah was great running the beat. For you, who was hot this week? Uh, well, actually, just sort of being there, I think that the two that I really find it hard to go past are Andrew McDonald and Brad Hodge. Like, being at that game, 10 overs in, it looked like the Melbourne Renegades were in trouble with the chase, and then they just sort of flicked the switch, and then I think we saw 10 sixes from them just after that. 124 run partnership, I think it was number five or six ever in Australia and certainly the best this season. That was a great result, but in terms of hot players, I don't think it's almost impossible for them to go past Herschel Gibbs. Mm. I certainly didn't expect him when he was signed by Mickey Arthur. I thought, oh, that's a bit of an interesting one. Uh, but it's been a really worked out fantastically well. It was great against the Melbourne Renegades and even better against the Melbourne Stars with 69 plundering them to everywhere. And when you look at the overall score, it was a really vital innings. So if you were playing a fantasy game at the moment, would you uh, would you bring Herschel in? Or would you be worried that he's not going to necessarily perform in the next game? Well, gee, I pro probably my gut feeling after the Renegades game is I thought there's probably the one really good innings you'd see from him for the tournament. But the way he's hit him just subsequently and even against the Stars makes me think, yeah, he would be a smart inclusion because yeah, the way he's going, there's hardly anyone going better at the moment. You've got to be careful not to dump <laughs> someone out like Chris Gale, of course, because they can always yeah. make runs at any time. Now, to the performances of the people who aren't quite getting the job done, I mentioned Cameron White at the start of the show. He just cannot buy a run at the moment. It's really, it's really hard to, hard to watch. Before the tournament, there was a warm-up game where he scored about 70-odd against the Melbourne Renegades, and he thought, this is actually the time where he's going to snap his form streak. He did actually, they did actually make a change and put him up the top of the order rather than number five. But at the start, it was just really hard to watch. Like, it was even, I think it was the fourth over of the game, he batted out a maiden, or what was actually a maiden to Remington, if there was a wide in there. It was just, re he just looks, he can't get his timing right, and it was just really, really hard to see. So, I think, yeah, he's got to be the, uh, the total biggest loser out of this week. It's really hard to see. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. Of course, Brisbane Heat's whole team at the moment look like they're, uh, they're off form as well. Make sure you're playing the KFC uh, fantasy game. Jesse's team's going okay. Let's not talk Let's about not it. Let's not talk about it each week. He says, don't talk about it. Because, of course, you can share another $20,000 of prizes, $10,000 for the winner, and $500 each week for the best performing side. Do you have Herschel Gibbs? Do you have Chris Gale? Brad Hodge? You might want to start getting some of these players in your team. Now, each week we give you guys, the fans at home, the chance to ask our resident expert, Jesse Hogan, anything you'd like about the Big Bash. Of course, all you need to do is jump on Twitter and use the hashtag Big Bash Show. And Jesse, we've got two more great tweets this week. The first one is from AFL Angry Boy. Obviously, uh, in the off-season, there's a bit going on. This is following the Big Bash. And uh, his question is, any up-and-coming youngsters to look out for in the BBL? I think probably there's probably three that stand out to me so far. 
from the Sydney Thunder, Luke Doran. He's a you know a spinner. Probably hasn't got a lot of wickets, but he's really impressed me with his economy rate. Shows good composure, so he's one to watch. Down to Hobart, Tom Triffitt down there behind the stumps. I mean, losing Tim Payne before the tournament was a massive blow to the Hurricanes. And the fact that he's been able to come in, keep really well and chime in, you know, he hasn't really been required a lot because the batting's been so good, but Tom Triffitt's been one to watch. And also the Adelaide strikers, Kane Richardson. He uh, showed a bit last year for when they were the Redbacks. Now here playing for the strikers, he uh, shows a lot with the new ball. And even the other night, I think he got something like two for two off two overs. So he's uh, really you know, excelled with the new ball there. When And it's probably an area where Adelaide doesn't really have a lot of depth in fast bowling, and he's really filling that gap. I don't know it's hard to pick from, let's say, uh, a 2020 a tournament, but is there anyone, one player out there you look at and go, well, oh, future test player? Oh, it's a, bit, it's a bit hard. Like, I think one player that really hasn't been excelling so far, but you still think is a test player, is Usman Khawaja. Yep. It's a funny thing. I don't think he's particularly suited to T20, but no. I still think he's all class, and I think he'll be back sooner rather than later. Beautiful. All right, on to the next tweet. Now, this one comes from at Annie Motek, who says... What do you think, or why do you think teams didn't pick up Andrew Simons? And also, uh, how do you think the recruitment of foreign players works? So, two-part question there. Andrew Simons first. I've got no know what the, uh, Andrew Simons' uh, priorities are anymore. He obviously earns a good living in um, playing in the IPL. Uh, spends a lot of time apparently fishing and you know, even doing his commentary work in the, IP, in the uh, Big Bash. So, unless there's a really sort of compelling deal to him, I don't think he's particularly be uh, worthwhile for him to do it. Um, in terms of the overseas players, I think the key thing is to look for players who are really available for a few of international duty. I think um, you know, there's no point selecting a gun player if by test duty they're only going to be able to play one or two games. Mm. So I think a couple of good examples of someone that's available for maybe half the comp and then a full comp. Probably the half the comp would be Johan Bota. Mm -hmm. Not a massive name, but a very good limited overs player. He's been excellent for Adelaide and even though he's gone now, his you know, influence has been huge. At the other end of the scale, sort of lower name players who won't get sort of international representation in the way. Probably O.A. Shah from Hobart, I think, is the, probably the best example of that. You know, not a big name. He hasn't really had a particularly standard innings, but every game he's sort of chimed in with about sort of 20 or 30 at better than a run a ball. And so that's a sort of example that if you look around and are very smart about, uh, you know, not necessarily getting the big name players, you can do that. And of course, Hobart's done that exceptionally well, not just with O.A. Shah, but also Rana Devet, who's just been superb ever since he's arrived in Hobart, not just not just this year, but before as well. Maybe the stars would be hoping they could turn back time with the old Jake man. <laughs> oh, lovely. And don't forget as well, actually, the New Zealand players, they're coming back as well. McCullum and Vittori, they'll be making an impact. There's no doubt about that. Those two players can play. Now, if you want to tweet to Jesse Hogan any questions you have at all about the Big Bash, get on Twitter, use the hashtag Big Bash Show, and we'll try and answer your questions in the coming weeks. All right, well, that's it for another week of the Big Bash Show. Jesse, as usual, thank you very much for coming in and lending us your uh, your superior knowledge on <laughs> oh, cricket. God. Of course, don't forget to get down to the games. The support has been fantastic, and it continues on as we head towards the big finals. The next game, we have the Brisbane Heat taking on the Hobart Thunder, or Hobart Hurricanes, I should say, at the Gabba on January 6th. Who's going to win that one, Jesse? Uh, probably, I'd like to reckon that... Heat might be able to come back and snare one there. Heat are going to snare one. All right, Melbourne Stars, Melbourne Renegades is the big battle of the Melbourne teams. That is at the MCG January 7. Who's your tip? Uh, I think the way the Renegades are going at the moment, you have to pick them. Hodge and the team, totally different. Team. It's got to be. Now the Sydney, the big Sydney clash, Thunder versus the Sixers at Homebush January 8. Make sure you get out there. People in New South Wales, who's your tip for that one? That's really a toss of the coin, that one. I think probably just because of the more even spread of talent, I'd go the Sixers. The Sixers, okay, interesting stuff. And the Perth Scorchers taking on the Adelaide Strikers at the Wacker on the 8th of January. Jesse, who's that one? Uh, I've liked Perth from the start, even though they've got a very sort of old team, and I think they'll do the business again. All right, nice work there indeed. Remember, if you have anything at all you want to ask us on the show, get on Twitter and hashtag Big Bash Show and get your questions in. We'll try and answer them in the coming weeks. Good luck, get out there, enjoy the games, enjoy the Big Bash, and we will see you again on January 9th.